Can we stand and turn to uh, 246 in your brown book? Today comes from Psalm 28, verses 6 through 7. Blessed be the Lord, because he has heard my voice and my supplication. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart exalts him with my song, and I shall thank him. Amen. Amen. Okay, if you turn in your um, green book to 428 in the garden.
Do we have the great hour of sharing envelopes that we want to pass? Remember all the blessings that you give us. You bless us every single day. You take care of us. You're with us. You watch over us. And we thank you that you've blessed us so much that we can give back. We give back a portion of what you have given to us. And we pray, Father, this be to your glory and to your honor and to the strengthening of your church. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good job. Good morning. Good morning. Let's look at our, I haven't had a time to even open it up and look at our prayer list. If there's any changes, let me know. I know we want to continue to pray for Gladys and all the nursing home patients that are dealing with the COVID. Gladys does hope to be home by the end of the month, and that'd just be so wonderful. I have a hope. Do they allow visitors right now? Or yes. Or yes. kind of on hold? You have to put masks on. Okay. Yeah. And wear gloves, too. Do they do that, too? If you go on the library, you have to wear all the precautions. If yeah. you want to. Yeah. Oh, really? I know we had to do that when Marie was in the hospital in the Alpine. We had to, because he was COVID, we didn't even know it. The new got now thing. Huh? The new got COVID. Jeanette's got a few now. Jeanette? Is Betty? You don't know, she said it's just pretty rapid. Yeah, yeah. Pray for the people in uh, Hawaii. A lot of them have passed yes. away with that uh, fire they had, and it went into the ocean. Yeah, it, it, the numbers way up on this. And one time it's 55, but I know it's much, much higher. Oh, it keeps jumping every time I've seen it. Ever much, much more hot every time. Well, it is. I have a classmate that he's lived in Hawaii all these years, and the way it sounds, he's close to. Hawaii there. I mean, to where they're firing yeah. stuff, but he says so far they're safe. Okay. So. Oh, that's right. It's just so frightening, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, so frightening. I mean, where he's at. Yeah. Know. Okay. Go down to Lacey, see if you see anybody that's doing better. And Green, I'd like to add uh, Fran Shepard on there. Uh huh. She's having a triple bypass open heart surgery tomorrow. Yeah. Three blockages now. Okay. Three bypass. Yeah. Okay. We'll say prayers for her. What was her first name? Fran. 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 F
Randy. That's Nature's yeah. daughter. Yeah. Randy, my sister Mary Jackson. She has to go Friday for a stint. So let's say a prayer for her. Mary Jackson. I know she's scared to death. Well, scary. Uh -huh. A stint. Louis' two sisters had so many stands. I know. They're like I seven know. or eight. Yeah. Did different parts of the potty, so, yeah. you know, she'll do better. She'll do better. Yeah, she will. She'll do better. Yeah. Doug O'Donnell's wife's got cancer. Who? Doug O'Donnell's wife is fighting cancer. Really? Yeah. Let's say the name again. Doug O'Donnell, they have the funeral home with every death, but his wife is fighting cancer. Well, she's, yeah. well, yeah. what is she, probably in her 50s, maybe? Uh, she's young, know. isn't she? Am I thinking the boy, the son? Yeah. She's probably close to 60. Yeah, she's close to 60. She's close to 60. Okay. Yeah, he was having a hard time getting her out of stone. I finally ended up going somewhere else. He's just so busy with everything. Really? Because they have a child that requires care, plus she's fighting cancer. He's just, he's it. He's, he's running himself to limit. Yeah. We want to do. We want to pray. Oh, uh, I got a text, a message. I text him first. He texts me back as uh, Blaine. That's Louis' nephew. Uh, he's done with all the chemo and stuff now, and they're going to plan on doing a surgery at the end of a month. But they're telling him he's only got like a two percent chance of surviving, of surviving the surgery. But he, he plans on doing it, you know. And it's, I mean, he's got like stomach and pancreas and part of the liver, and it's just widespread cancer. But, and they're going to do a surgery. So uh, keep Blaine, Blaine Ritchie in your prayers. Are they doing that? Huh? The end of the month. I think about the 25th, they might have it scheduled for the 20th. Yeah. But he's getting. Sometimes the, they try to build up their strength enough, and you know, yeah. to do this. He said he's feeling better because doesn't. where the tumors are makes them so uncomfortable that they just try to remove their muscles. He, he said he's going. He, well, the chemo's the leaving the side effects from it, and so he's feeling better. But still, yeah. he's got a lot, a lot facing him. All right, take a quick look at your name. Ruby's family. Yeah. Remember uh Hold Iron? Yes. Yes. She's lost two sisters in maybe two weeks. Yeah. So uh, I know her family's hurting. Okay. Any others? Let's take these to the Lord in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to be here, Lord. Even though our hearts are heavy, when we think of all the troubles in the world and all the losses, Lord. Lord, we'd like to hold up Gladys Royce to you. And we're so thankful, Lord, for all the progress she's made, for all that she's went through, Lord. And we just pray that she'll be home by the end of the month like she plans on, Lord. Thank you. And we pray for all the nursing home patients, Lord. We pray each one can come through this COVID. And I know it'll, it'll take it out of them, but Lord, bring them through. Thank you, Lord. And we pray for the fire on, on, in Hawaii and Maui. So many heartbroken families, so many families with no homes, some with no businesses. Lord, we just put them all in your hands and pray there'll be help out there for them, Lord. We ask all this in your name. Thank you, Lord. And we pray for Fran Shepherd going to borrow for triple bypass heart surgery, Lord. We just pray everything goes well for Fran. Successful surgery, and that she recovers quickly, Lord. Thank you. And we pray for Mary Jackson. She's going to have a stent, and I know she's nervous about it, Lord. But we just put Mary in your hands and, and pray everything goes well. Thank you, Lord. And we pray for Doug O'Donnell's wife. 
with cancer or so much going on in that family. We just also pray for pray for Doug that he'll be able to take care and keep his family going, Lord. And just be with uh, be with his wife, Lord. We're going through this terrible, awful cancer. Thank you, Lord. And we pray for Blaine. He's been through so much with the COVID, Lord. Not with the COVID, but with the cancer. So much, Lord. So many treatments. And so we just put him in his hands. The doctors don't give him much chance, for Lord. But we know you can give him a better chance. So, Lord, we put Blaine in your hands. Thank you. And we pray for uh, Ruby's family. We pray for Carol Davis's family. We pray for her sister, Wanda, for her family, Lord. So much sadness. Just be with that family. And Lord, I just pray they could turn to you for each day, for each day and help and get him through, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now I pray for Dan as he brings a message, Lord. Help us, Lord, each one to listen and to understand and to apply it to our life, Lord. In thy precious name we pray. Amen. It helps us to draw closer to you, to know you. And we pray that now, Lord, that you would open our hearts and our minds and fill us with your Holy Spirit and the power that comes from your scripture. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Jumping into Isaiah 55. I didn't really have a reason for getting there. It just That's where I ended up. Amen. <laughs> so it took me a while to get there, so 
Isaiah 55, when I, the book of Isaiah itself is broken up into three sections. The first 35, 36 chapters are God's oracle against Judah condemning sin, their sin, and then there's a small section in the middle, three or four chapters, that's the account of King Hezekiah. And this is basically um, history, the historical account and the things that went on with the life of King Hezekiah. Now we get from chapters 40 to 66, it comes in comfort and the hope for the exiles, the coming restoration of Zion. So when we get into chapter 55, it's an invitation, it's a call to seek, and wraps up with joy. And really as you go through it, it's like really a beautiful picture of what the Lord wants for us and the life that he wants to have with us. And he starts off with, come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Now some of the other translations will say, come all, the NASB says, you there, anyone thirsty? And the King James just comes off with, ho, why, where do you get that? But it's a call to attention, a bit more emphatic than what the ESV says, but come. You there. This is an invitation, an open invitation to everybody to walk with the Lord. So he says, are you thirsty? Do you want better? In John, Jesus says, whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst. But the water that I give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. And really this comes off as just God's love for us. This picture of him wanting us to be with him. And we'll see a lot of correlation from Isaiah to Jesus. Talking about, are you thirsty? And then Jesus with, I will give you wells of eternal life. So if you get an invitation, anybody who gets an invitation, it's up to us whether or not we're going to accept the invitation. So there has to be some sort of action on our part. But he gives out an invitation to all of humanity to come to the marriage feast. With that, that parable, there was many people that were invited, but they didn't go. So they just went out into the streets like, hey, anybody want to come to a party? We've got the clothes, we've got the food. Come on in. And this is where we're at. And chapter 56 goes a little bit more in depth just on bringing in the Gentiles into the Lord and into Israel. So he, we want to build from that invitation, we still have to build a lifelong relationship to the Lord. And do we accept a daily invitation, a daily invitation to walk with the Lord? Not just an every once in a while, it's not just a friend that you see here and there. It's not the holiday Jesus. We don't want to be called priesters. And I might know that one. No. <laughs> there are people that only come to church on Christmas and Easter. Oh. We call them priesters. <laughs> so all right. <laughs> so put that one in your in your notes. Go be a priester. <laughs> so do we accept a daily invitation? A daily invitation to walk with the Lord. To every day to be with him. To seek after him. So whether or not we are in Christ or if we've been in Christ or in the church serving for a long time or if we're deciding that we're just coming to Jesus, we should be saying yes, Lord, to his invitation. Yes, to be with him. Yes, saying you there. And, but to say no, Lord, that's kind of a conflict. If you call him Lord, that means you're trusting in him. So then 
no Lord is a conflict to his to the trusting in him. Because a lot of times to say yes, Lord, is means there's something uncomfortable usually is gonna happen. We're gonna be he's going to always push us a little bit farther, but he wants us to be with him. Come to me. He says, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. As he wants to give milk, wine, this isn't just basic stuff. He wants to give us abundantly more. And this is one of those things like, yes, I know all these things, but that picture of Christ wanting to be with us, wanting us to be with him always. He says, why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. He wants to bless us, but we a lot of times start chasing after things that won't satisfy. We do things that just, we go after it and after it and after it and after you get it. It's like, eh, not exactly what I thought it was going to be. A dog catching its tail. Got it. <laughs> now what? <laughs> that wasn't quite what I expected when I caught it. So it's like, yeah, that, and you can put that in there. It doesn't satisfy. The dog's not satisfied after he gets a hold of his tail. That's what he's saying. You're going after, you're chasing after things that don't satisfy. And he says, let your soul, it continues after he says, come to me, listen to me, eat what is good, and let your soul delight itself in abundance. He has so much for us. To have this with no money, he will provide for us. And this doesn't, we're not going to slide into the prosperity thing where everybody gets a new car and a new house and if you don't have these things you're not saved and all this stuff. but the lord wants to bless us and to let us live our lives in abundance in spiritual abundance being content being satisfied in our souls buy with no money because the lord has already paid our way he's giving us something we can never afford and it's there for the taking and at this time, what's being written, this is written to the Jews, that this is going to be the restoration time for them right now, and then talking about the Christ that is to come for all of us. So we have to accept that invitation, and we have to trust in him. He's calling to us to have that daily, everyday walk. As he yells, you there, I have everything you need. Gets their attention. I have everything that you need. Walk with me. Come with me. Don't waste your time and your efforts on the shallow things of the world. And just have what you what you need. Pursuing him and it's been pursuing other things of the world and still not being satisfied. These billionaires and multi multi millionaires, all this money. How much money do you need? More. Because if I have this much, I'm still not satisfied. And that can be with anything. I did it, and it wasn't more. Maybe if I did it some more, or maybe if I go after a little bit more. Chasing after the world, chasing after the flesh. Ecclesiastes says it's chasing the wind and never getting what you need when it's right in front of us. Again, he says, listening carefully to me. Listen carefully. I have what you need. It's not in the flesh. You will be content in me. That's being content with what you have, not with what you think you need. The Lord is what we have, and he will give us everything that we need. He says, incline your ear. And as you go through this whole thing, you keep saying, listen to me. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live. I will make you with you an everlasting covenant my steadfast sure love for david so he wants to make a covenant with us the same way that he made one with david 
one that's going to last, one that's going to be eternal, one that's going to be ongoing. But look at David's life. David was a mess. And you can still have that covenant with the Lord. David's life was up and down, back and forth. He had sin, he had love for the Lord, he loved the word, then he'd mess up. He'd... Everything. David's life was much like any of the things that we go through. Well, except maybe for murder, adultery, and all that kind of stuff. Hopefully. Hopefully not. Hopefully not any murderers. Okay. But all of the things that David did is like things that people fall into. It wasn't something that he woke up in the morning. He's like, hey, you know what I'm going to do today? No, it's just that he lived his life and he fell into some pits. He had problems. He had things. That's what we have. But the Lord says, I want to make a long lasting covenant of love with you. He says, pay attention to me what I have to say. I will keep you. I will set you apart. I will show you my love and make a covenant with you just like David. Even with all of his mess, all of his stuff, come to me. I have what's better. And listen, that your soul may live. I have this promise that I make to you. Now if we take that and we compare it to Revelation 3. It says, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline which we really don't we would rather have it easy smooth sailing but jesus says i will rebuke and discipline you because i love you so be earnest and repent which david was actually very good for taking his own blame he didn't point it off he didn't push it off on anybody else he says jesus says here i am and i stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with them and he with me. And this was written to the lukewarm church of Laodicea, the one that says, you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth because you are of no use to me. But Jesus wants to be. He's knocking at the door. He wants us to be in his life. And the picture of somebody coming in and having a meal with somebody, just coming together. And at that, in this uh, society and in this, this time, as it is now, to have a, just to go to dinner with somebody or have a meal with someone, just to sit and talk, it's I accept you. You are family. You are close to me. And this is what Jesus is saying. I'm going to knock. Are you going to come to the door? Even though you have the sin, he is still calling them he is still calling us where he said that i'm going to spit you out i'm going to vomit you up is kind of i think more of the direct translation but i still love you i know who you are and it's just a i've seen pictures and paintings of this you know of jesus knocking at the door and it's always just it's a very calm very peaceful picture of jesus doesn't say he's pounding on it not sitting there kicking on it trying to wake people up he's just knocking it's like hey i'm here i'm here it's like that still small voice i am here waiting for you i want i want you indeed i have given him as a witness to the people a leader and a commander of the people surely you shall call a nation you do not know gentiles and a nations who do not know shall run to you because of the lord your god and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. And this opens up what he has talked about before. Everybody is welcome. A nation that you do not know will come running because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. It's not just Israel, but all of us. He says, seek the Lord, and he, while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near, let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts and return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. So we look at the words that he uses here. He uses seek, call, forsake, return and we find mercy. We say the Lord is always present but he says come to the Lord while he can be found. 
forsake and repent. He talks about it in Revelation. Repent, earnestly, repent. Come, come to the Lord. Forsake what you've done. Forsake your former life and come to the Lord. Return. Repent. So if we are saved, whether or not, this is a time when we should come to the Lord, but we don't want to be carnal Christians. Have the salvation. Got enough to get your foot in the door. You pass the threshold, but we never see the fullness of the Lord. We don't get the fullness of his blessings. Let your soul delight in abundance. Seek the Lord, call to him in return. And the word here, in the word for seek in Hebrew is called derash, which means a beaten down path because it's going back and forth. They talked about a wilderness, like if you're going through the woods and people keep using the trail until it gets beat down. The picture I get is that my dog, when I was a kid, we had a chain link fence and the dog would just run laps, <laughs> constantly running laps around the fence because something might happen and he's not going to see it. So he would run circles and circles and that, that grass was never grown for that path <laughs> all the way around the entire yard, no matter what my mom did, like put bricks in there so he couldn't, he had to go. So it just made path like that. That's what Darash is, a beaten down path because you keep going back and forth. You keep going to the Lord every day. You go to him and that path is clear because you're there every single day running that same path over and over. This is how we should respond to the Lord, because he will pardon us, not just pardon us, pardon us abundantly. He wants to bless us and love us with no exceptions. All sin is not all sin, but yours or all of them, except for that one. I mean, seriously, I'm not doing that one. No, it is all sin without exceptions. I will pardon you and I'll pardon you abundantly. He says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, and your ways are not my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts more than your thoughts. Recognizing that the Lord is far superior to us in every way. And he loves, and he thinks we don't think the same way. So this is a part of trusting him. We don't understand the mind of God, so we have to trust him, knowing that his perspective and his plan is perfect. And he doesn't think and love with the limitations that we do. It's not self-serving, it's not selfish. It's just above and beyond anything that we can comprehend. J.B. Phillips says, if God was small enough for me to figure out, he wouldn't be big enough for me to worship. Trusting in him, having faith in him, knowing that whatever's happening, there's a reason for it. Everything has a purpose. And I had talked to Violet about this in the past week, and she said, well, what's the purpose of bugs? <laughs> so, well, they, they have a purpose. <laughs> Not that she sees, but bugs do have a purpose. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth, and shall not return void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing which I, for which I sent it. Yeah, the bread, his word, he talks about the water, all of this is Jesus pointing to Jesus. My word does not return void. So if we are in the scripture, just, just reading the scripture here, you've heard the word of God today, and it will not return void to your life. It sinks in. Even if it's like, ah, oh, that was boring. You still heard the word of God. I might be boring, but the word of God is the power and the strength. <laughs> So if nothing else, I've accomplished that. By the end of this, you've heard all of Isaiah 55. And the Lord says, my word shall not return void. It accomplishes what I please. I give you, this is a gift. He's 
closing that gap in. He's way beyond us, but he's closing that gap. He lets the water come, the snow come, that the ground can bring up the seed that we have bread, his word, blessings. So to, to accomplish what is a pleasing to him and shall prosper for the thing that was sent. We accept his invitation. Are we going to accept the invitation that he's given to us? You there. I'm knocking. I'm here. And this might be one of those, like, <coughs> this might be a big I know that kind of message. But to remember that the Lord is there wanting us. Just as I'm knocking. I just want to be with you. And that, to me, that just that picture, that just him sitting there waiting, it's like an embrace. He wants to embrace us, that, that hug. I love you. I want you to be in my life, and I want to be in your life. And he's saying this, I just, I want. Come to me, I will bless you, I will pardon you. You will live in abundance. It says, for you shall go out with joy, and you should be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth, singing before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. And instead of thorns shall come up a cypress tree, instead of a briar there shall be a myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. He made that covenant with David, I will love you, I have made a promise to you, and I will keep it for all time. He told David, your descendant would be on the throne. Jesus is on the throne always and forever. He made that covenant. He made that promise to David. So we have blessings. We have joy. We have the love and the covenant of David that stands forever. So when I look at this, it's just the Lord just wants that embrace, to hug, to love us, and to let us know that we are loved. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the promises that you make to us. We thank you that we can see this even from Isaiah almost 3,000 years ago that you made a promise and you set it out there, Lord, that you love us. You want us to be with us. You abide in me. I abide in you. We thank you for that promise, Father. Help us to recognize how much you love us and how much you want for us. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. he doesn't have that relationship with the Lord he's making that it's open to anybody and everybody he will pardon and in abundance would you please stand and agree in book in terms of 164 he is
I remember. <laughs> Doubling down this week. Yeah. All right. yeah. We thank you for this offering. We thank you for the opportunity to give back to you, to give more, Father, to help us to be cheerful givers, and that it would all be to your glory. We thank you for these blessings. We thank you for this time. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let this be my song.